Okay, so uh, welcome everybody. Today is um, Wednesday. Today is Wednesday, April 1st. Uh, so last day before, or at last in-class day before we have our midterm, which room two. So come to office hours tonight if you'd like. And we're going to do more of this parameterized surface business stuff today because there's, there's certainly a lot more to do. And I had written some notes last night, um, and I had done a couple of exam a couple more examples, but I think I'm going to save that for, I'm going to save those for a uh, written homework, but I'll kind of tell you some examples to expect. So um, some examples to expect on the written, Homework six involving parameterized surfaces. I think I'll have you a try coming up with the parameterization of the couple sur these couple surfaces, the donut or bagel, but in math terms we call this a torus. So this looks like in 3D space, it's a surface of revolution, and it's a donut. So what do you have? It's a, it's a circle in that RZ plane, and then you've rotated it. So it's kind of this thing. So, be, so uh, this is going to be the first example of the day for me, but I thought um, maybe we'll make this homework. Okay, so that's a surface of revolution because you're revolving this circle of, I don't know, maybe radius one centered at the point like two, one, or sorry, two comma zero in the RZ plane. And if you know the formula for parameterizing a surface of revolution, then it shouldn't be that bad because it just boils down to parameterizing that little circle and then tucking it into the full, um, like the full parameterization setup that we discussed on Monday. Remember on Monday, I think every single surface that we parameterized was a surface of revolution. So we're talking cones, pa uh, parabolic bulls. Um, I th what other things do we have? Um, a, a vertical cylinder. All these things can be attained by slicing it in the RZ plane and rotating that picture. Uh, and this was, this is no different. And, um, so I wanted to maybe actually save that for something not in class, because I promise, although many surfaces are surfaces of revolution, they're not all of that. They're not all like that. Um, a second thing I'll probably ask you to do, um, but expect this later, it's probably a, sur a sphere. This is a very important one, parameterizing a sphere. But again, that's a surface of revolution as well. I mean, you can imagine the thing you've got to rotate, it's, it's this, a semicircle, and then if you rotate that about that z axis up top, you get a sphere, a lovely, nice sphere. So it's kind of this thing. Okay, and that thing. Um, and the third thing I think I was I'm gonna skip today. Maybe make homework, or maybe I'll make a an extra YouTube video and give some hints. Is uh, the third thing is a helicoid. So um, a 2D one. So it kind of looks like it's actually a sur it's not exactly a surface of revolution, but it's sort of we've kind of done the one dimensional versions, but they do something like this. Sort of like if you look at a screw that you would use to build you know a piece of furniture with, this is the that vertical line I'm drawing is a is like the the central rod of the screw, and the edges are sort of the um, oh I don't know what they're called like the like the fins I, don't, I forget what they're called but like the fins on a screw, um, which is not a surface of revolution. It kind of looks like it might have some symmetry, but you know a, a true surface of revolution is one for which if you held it in your hand and spun it along that z axis, it would kind of look still. But this one wouldn't quite look still, okay. But I think you can expect these to come on homework, and I'll give you some hints on that. But I'm actually going to skip doing those in class all, all today, just because 
you've got bigger fish to fry right now. And I think those are good to play with on your own. But I will tell you, um, I will, the first example of the day is parametrizing uh, planes and portions of planes. So let's do um, example, of, uh, another example of parametrizing a surface. Um, uh, this class of examples is going to be planes and portions of planes and portions of planes in R3. That means just 3D space, remember? So I want to do a brief little reminder. Remember uh, to parametrize a, a single line, a line passing through point P with tangent vector V uh, you could set up so we would had we had R of T this is a, a single a linear sorry a, a, a curve a one-dimensional object so we need we needed one input. Well, this was pretty easy. This is uh, this was hopefully this is routine by now, but it was basically p plus t v. And you could read this as okay, um, if I draw my little point here, like this was my p, and this was my v. It's like okay, at p this is really r of zero, and for each time increment, that's telling me how much v I want to step along. And as you let your t values range from, you know, in these between zero and positives and negatives, you'll foliate this entire line. You have one dimension of motion because you have one single t variable. And really, the picture is going to be quite like if, if this makes sense to you, if you're comfortable with this, then it's not that diff different to uh, extrapolate to the next dimension. So let's. Let's p um what I want to say. Let p be the plane pl the plane in 3D containing so I'm gonna I'm gonna have an arbitrary point and two tangent vectors. This is kind of something that we talked about maybe way back in January to talk about a plane in 3D. Um, you know, you can have a point and two vectors. And, you know, I think in the past when we wanted to really get an equation for it, we would take those two vectors, cross them, get a normal, and then we had nice ways to come up with the equation for that plane. But this is different. We're doing parametrizing. So we're parametrizing this plane, so it's going to look differently. And let's see. okay, here's, here we go. So containing the point. Uh, let me think. Uh, this is not great. I'm using big P for the plane and little p. I'll do, I'll try to do little p. And that's not a row. Sorry about that. <laughs> big little p is that base point, so I'll call it x naught comma y naught z naught. I'll kind of draw this over here. That's my little p. <clears throat> and I need two tangent vectors, so I'll have big A is a x a y a z. Okay, let me do that in maybe blue. And then we've got containing point, okay, okay. It contains the point A and has two tangent vectors. It has with two tangent vectors, A and B. You can imagine my three components, BX, BY, BZ. And maybe I'll do if that blue one was A, maybe this purple one over here is going to be B. And sort of, you know, this picture that I'm drawing over here to the far right, you've got to imagine it in 3D space. So that's, you know, X, Y, Z. And the thing I've drawn is sort of a portion of this plane sitting in 3D. As we've all kind of know by now, these are, tr these are tricky to draw in a way that uh, insists 
it's a 2D thing in a 3D space if you don't have any curviness. Like a sphere is easier to draw than a plane, which is weird, even though planes seem to be simpler, but that's just the case. So you've really got to imagine that this thing is like, you know, tilted around and has maybe has a shadow or, you know, it's, it's, it's a 2D thing in a 3D space. So how do we find the parameterization of this? Okay, so um, how we parameterize this thing, it's gonna look very similar. So I'm going to just highlight, I can I realize I have a highlighter tool. So it's gonna look similar to this up here, but instead it's gonna look like the following. I'll write it down for you and I'll tell you where, and we'll explain maybe why it makes sense. So I'm, I have to have a two parameter intake, so a U and a V. And you should think about it as, well, I've got a base point P. If I, and then I want to add little steps in the U direction, sorry, little steps in the A direction, parameterized by U, and plus little steps in the V direction, sorry, little steps in the B direction, and, and V is telling me how to do that. Okay. This parameterizes, the plane in question. Okay, so I, I learned last night on my own how to copy stuff and move it to this next page. So I'm going to copy and I'm gonna just go to this next page unless anybody has any objections and I'm go we're gonna really kind of just spell it out why, why that thing in that box really is describing that object to the in that cloud that I've drawn. So I'm gonna move over. All right. I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna use three. Nope. Oh my goodness. Use page three, and what I want to do is I want to paste this. Cool. Okay, so let's draw, so let's draw the parameter domain. The parameter domain is U and V. And let's draw in 3D space, maybe our things. Okay, so this is gonna be point P, little p. This is gonna be vector uh, A. And well, what's, did you have the same right color? Yes, good, I used that right color. Okay, and then this will be some vector B. Okay, so let's see what happens when I plug stuff in. So over here, um, and I'll do I'll do nice colors. So over here, this is this point is zero zero in the UV plane, and let's plug it on up into the parameterization. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at R. I'm looking at R of zero zero. I plug that in. I get P plus zero A plus zero B, and lo and behold, I'm just landing at P. So. This spot right here is the image of that red dot. So that point is, uh, I think it zoomed in, I don't wanna do that, okay. That point is, I'm gonna call it R of zero, zero. Now let's plug in a different point. Uh, let's, I'm gonna, let's plug in, this right here is one comma zero. That's where my U is one and my V is zero. So if I plug that thing on in there, I get R, of one zero, this gives me P plus one times A plus zero B, which is P plus A. So if I wanna plot that in 3D space, I should think, okay, start off at my P, at that red point, and make a jump of uh, length and direction A. So that'll land me right here. So this point is R of one comma zero. Now you might be able to fill in the rest of the details. So let's think, um, what's a good color orange? Up here might be zero comma one, and I'm not gonna do the computation, but this is going to land up here at the tip of B, because really um, it's P plus B. So it's like, I should, uh, maybe I'll write it. Maybe I'll just for consistency, R of zero one is P plus zero A plus one B, and I get P plus B. And again, it's starting at P, jumping up B. So that's R of zero comma one. And let's think what's my last color. I'll do sky blue. This right here is one one. 
and I won't write it out. This will go right here. So this is this is uh, r of one comma one, and I want you all to think really hard. Go back to the first. Um, this was the very first written homework assignment I ever gave you, and it was kind of a fun one. And I asked you all to sort of like. It was that last question where I had you draw a parallelogram and a bunch of red dots on a parallelogram and ask if you made a computer bubble plot a whole bunch of random points, what would the thing, what would, what would your computer screen see? And the answer is kind of was a parallelogram. So as you plot um, a whole bunch of these little gray points, so as your parameter values range between zero and one, these little gray points are all going to map out to little points in that parallelogram out here. So this is, so these little points are alpha, beta, and the image points are, you know, P plus alpha V, sorry, not V, v alpha A plus beta B. And they sort of, if you plotted, if you made a computer plot infinitely, not infinitely many, um, like trillions of these things, it would foliate out to be that exact plane. That's, that's kind of the picture we're seeing here. And also, um, you can see where vertical and horizontal lines go to. There's a lot of colors happening, but that's okay. So if I just connect the dots, this, this green, this little grass green from red to dark green, would get mapped to the, this line. And similarly, all of these horizontal lines are going to map to these horizontal lines. Sorry, not, they're not horizontal in the image. They're parallel to A, I suppose. And my final color, what's a nice, how about this nice little lemon? Okay, um, now we've got this vertical between red and orange, and that's gonna go here. And again, you're kind of seeing this grid unfold. So this is really the mechanics of how this parameterization works. And it's a really good example to have in mind. <clears throat> so this is how you parameterize a, a, a plane using 2D. Okay, well, actually I'll say, um, so to parameterize the full infinite plane, let you'll let your parameter values range from negative infinity to positive infinity. Because see this, if you want to go infinity those two ways, parallel to those, um, that grass color, you'll want your u variable to go from, this is u goes to negative infinity, and here's u and u going to positive infinity. It's starting to get messy, but if you want to go, if you want to in include all of the plane vertically, the parallel with that lemon, you'll let your r, your v go to positive infinity and negative infinity. So to parameterize the full infinite plane, what you'll want is u and v. You basically, you won't have any bounds. Negative infinity, you'll include all of them. But for the parallelogram, para, parallelogram, you'll want to restrict between zero and one. I kind of, the, between zero and one of your parameters is kind of where you can see that those um, gray dots I've drawn. If you draw a gray dot outside of that parameter domain, like right here, that's gonna land outside of that parameter domain, um, outside of that parallelogram. So yeah, let me, I'm gonna do the last touches of this drawing and then I'll move on to surface area and doing integrals over this kind of stuff. Unless there are any more questions. This is an X, Y, Z. And then I want to kind of separate this drawing from the main one. Okay, that's the 2D picture. That's the parameter domain. And this is image under R. Okay, all right, I'm gonna to flip to this next page. 
board work was kind of messy there. Sorry. Um, okay, yeah. So let's do a quick, quick little example before we do uh, <clears throat> a surface integrals. So to kind of go backwards from this over here, let's say this is going to be another example. So let's just say you get a problem that says find or so describe the provided a per parametric surface. So it's kind of the other way. So in the previous kind of I gave instructions for if you if you know the geometric object you want to cook up, what's the thing that you write out? Um, and you know what? I'm gonna do something over here. Sorry, I'm a little I'm a little I'm not terribly organized, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shrink this and I'm really going to I'm really gonna write out what this means. Like if you actually, I mean, I spent all this time to write bx, by, bz, ax, ay, az, and x not, y not, z not, but I kind of never really used that. So let me show you after you factor all this in, you'll really get r of uv is okay. <clears throat> I need three components. The x component is x not plus <laughs> u ax plus v bx comma y not plus u a y plus v b y and you can imagine where that last one's going to go it's going to be z not plus u a z plus v b z so this is my x that's my x my y my z okay okay i just thought i'd say that so I'm going to go back and I'm going to kind of give this to you and this next example, I'm going to give this to you, but I'll, I picked out some numbers. Okay. So sorry, I'm jumping over the place. I'll try to keep more constant. Um, so describe the provided parametric surface and we'll see R of UV is the following set of three things. We've got six plus V comma two U minus v and nine plus u minus seven v. So to kind of get a good grip on what we're actually holding right now, I'm gonna, just like when we had lines, you know, parameterized lines, let's factor up the con, let's, let's split it up into constants and stuff with variables and then factor those variables out in front. So what I'm going to get is the constants plus my u times some stuff plus my v times some stuff. This is going to be my base point. This is going to be one of my directions. So um, my, maybe my a, that'll be my b. We can, this isn't too bad. This is 6, 0, and 9. Over here, i got to look for the things that have a u in it. My first one, I don't see any u, so that's 0. I'm looking at a 2 and a 1. And the V gives me 1, negative 1, negative 7. And so thus, R parameterizes a plane in 3D containing point uh, 6, 0, 9 with tangent vectors 0 to 1 and you know 1 negative 1 negative 7 and you could go further i mean if you really wanted you know now use stuff that you remember from midterm 1 so if you want to find a normal vector to this thing well you can just cross these puppies and you'll get you can get some geometric information but really that's how you sort of extrapolate <clears throat> You know, this thing that at first might look menacing, really decompose it into what you've got. And you can notice that each of these three component functions are all linear functions. You know, I don't see any u squareds, I don't see any v squareds, I don't see any cosine, I don't see any e to the x. I just see adding and I just see rescaling my variables by constants. And that is linear. Okay, so good. Okay, so this next stuff is fun. 
So let's talk about um, coordinate vector fields, or coordinate vectors. Okay. <clears throat> so coordinate vectors on parametrized surfaces. So I want to do a, brief, a little brief reminder about what we what we did when we took uh, when sorry I want to give a brief reminder about what we did when we had uh, a single variable param parametrization. So recall when we had r of t and t was on the interval a to b. You know it kind of looked like this. Um, there was A to B, and it gave us some wild curve over here. <clears throat> and if we took R prime of T, what this looks like is a, uh, is it looks like vectors always tangent to the curve in 3D space. So the red vectors are illustrating R prime of T. This was this was kind of nice, and and our prime was just component wise derivatives. So we're going to be doing something similar. Uh, okay, we're gonna we're going to take derivatives of r, but when r is a function of u and v. So I kind of want to move to this next page because I I want to draw big. So this picture this should this should be so I'll I'll say so idea do the same for surfaces. Faces. All right. So when we have a surface, recall, so when we have a surface, we really have, it's an R of UV, which has three components, right? It's an X a y and a z and my u's typically range between i don't know some a and b and v range between some c and d you know like why is r prime written under the a minus b line ah uh i think sorry somebody asked a question and so i'm looking at it and uh you can kind of ignore us i probably was just writing it mindlessly not thinking about where to put it r prime of t is that red vector yeah thanks thanks for catching that nicola thanks for catching that okay so over here i'll draw the quick little picture what we've got is the parameter domain u and v and maybe this is u between i don't know a and b c and d and this gives us, I'm going to draw some the surface down here. So, so maybe it kind of does something like this. So my horizontal lines kind of go to these horizontal lines. Um, and then these vertical lines go to these crossings. If it helps you, you can think of these surfaces as pieces of fabric. You know, I mean, look at whatever fabric you're wearing right now. They're stitched together with, uh, you know, hor with horizontal and vertical stitchings. And that's, that's kind of what you're seeing here. That's kind of how you should think of these. That's one good way to get a good intuition about what, um, you know, what these surfaces are doing. Okay, let me, did I freeze? No. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take partial derivatives. So... Um, ex let's explore, so let's explore what is, if I take the partial derivative of R with respect to, I don't know, let's say partial U. And what I mean by that is each is component wise partial derivative. Just like before when I said, when I said R prime of T, I really meant component wise R prime. And so partials is no different. So I'm going to be, let's explore what the heck this thing is. This is partial X, partial U, partial Y, partial U, and partial Z, partial U. And one way to kind of figure out what this picture is, and kind of don't, don't freak out for a second, um, I'm going to erase some of this picture, but I, I'm, it's gonna come back. It's going to come back. Remember, um, 
what like let's let's look at this partial u along i don't know let's say this line right here along this line um maybe that maybe the r takes it to sort of to this line over here and i've got a lot of data floating around but let me let me erase the junk for a second if i erase the junk i'm really i really just have this thing i can press an undo button and it all comes back so don't freak out but really look at that that's a parameterized curve right so if i take a partial derivative with respect to u i should be just seeing the same picture as before where, I, where we had red vectors along that curve i'm gonna see i guess we're doing blue so blue vectors along this single curve so let me let me you know i was kind of covering up the junk that we weren't focused on because that's what partial derivatives are it's covering up the junk you're not looking at um so let me undo everything so now i'm gonna now i'm gonna really draw those vectors so really um I'll draw it. I'll draw it in light blue. Actually, the this is you can expect to be this vector field up here. And what the what the it does, it points along those u curves. This is always this is always the picture of how it goes. Okay, um, and this is called we. In in words, this is called the coordinate. The this nope. This is the u coordinate vector vector field. But we'll talk about vector fields later. Don't don't let that word field scare you. And um, you can also call it. You can use this symbol. You'll see it as a symbol. Partial u. And you can just call it partial u and this is partial u and it always points tangent to the surface and it in it in a very explicit direction it tells you if you're standing at a point on the surface like maybe you're standing right here and you want to increase your u parameter well the that part this vector this partial u is telling you if you increase that u parameter where will you move on the surface that's kind of what it's telling you. And so you can gather, I'm sure, um, if you look at partial R, partial V, which is the triple component, partial X, partial, partial Z, partial V. Um, let's, uh, let's do this is equal to partial V. You're going to get vectors pointing in the in the purple fibers in the direction of those purple fibers of your fabric so okay let's let's see um do i want to use the same purple i'll use kind of this peach color it's telling you how to move if you want to stay on a purple line okay you can cut you get the picture and so at each point like I'll draw it really thick right here. At each point, you've got two vectors, and they tell you um, how you'll move if you either increase u or v. And I'm going to call this this is partial. Ooh, no. This is partial v. That's this thing right here. Okay. So let's. I should probably do an example. Okay. I should probably do an example. So we might not get to integration today, but that's okay. I'm gonna to move to this next question and we're, what we'll do is I'll give you parameterization. We'll actually compute these, these derivative vectors and we'll plot them. And I'll show you that it really gives you what, what this picture that I've insisted. I'll, I'll, I'll show you that the math works out and it agrees with the, the geometric picture I've just drawn. <clears throat> so here's page six, here's an example, plot the <clears throat> partial u and partial v of r of u v on the surface at 
uv equals, okay, let's think. Uh, what did I write? At three pi halves and one half. So I, I need to tell you what my parameterization is. So our r of uv, it's going to be a cone. It's v cosine u, v sine u, and 3v. And if you're like, how is that a cone again? Here's how you can remind yourself. You see, oh, look, I'm seeing cosine and sine. So that kind of looks like cylindrical. So this is, I know this is x, but I know that's r cosine theta. This is y, and that's r sine theta. And this is just z. <clears throat> and so we're kind of seeing, again, that r is looking like v. We're seeing theta is looking like u. And uh, z is looking like 3v. So if I draw this in the rz plane, the thing that I get, rz, what I'm looking at is this parameterized segment <clears throat> where I have uh, this thing right here. This is slope three. This is um, r z equals v times one three. Okay, so that's that's kind of that's just like the takeaway. Yeah, this is how you would convince yourself. I'm dealing with a, with a cone that's opening sharply upwards using this parameterization. So that's as a uh, nod to Monday's class when we did a whole bunch of parameterized surfaces of, that were rotationally symmetric. So we're really dealing with um, this cone, and I haven't really told you the parameter domain, so let's have r is going between, sorry, not r. Let's have v range between 0 and 1, and let's have my u, which you should really think in your head is really just theta. We're just calling it something else. You might think that's annoying. Why are we calling it something else? It's because I really want to, I want these to come in a pair, so I really want two letters are similar that are not x and y, so u and v are pretty nice. But u being theta really kind of tells me I want u to go between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, so let's draw this parameterization. Um, I've got u, v, 0, 2 pi, 0, 1. Okay, and then this goes to this nice cone over here. And, um, okay, so the, um, I wanna, I, I might not use the same color scheme as I've used in the past, but what are these? These are these, these horizontals that go from zero to two pi, foliate the horizontal circles. So this gives me this, 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 and this. And those vertical purples um, map to, the picture in the RZ plane at each slice. So it, this really, the purple, the purple lines are really the purple, the theta slices, that stuff. Okay, and if we just see where the question asks to see what happens at three pi halves comma one half. So that might be right here. That is three pi halves comma one half. And if I plug that in, we got to remember, we'll have to be plugging three pi halves into our cosine and sine. So this is going to give us one half times the cosine of that angle, zero. One half the sine of that angle, which is negative one. And uh, z is just take that, take that v and triple it. So three over two. And this gives me zero, negative one half, three halves. <clears throat> that's a that really is a point on the cone, and that's the a point on the cone that's kind of closer to you, kind of is coming to you at this on the negative y axis by a half, and up along that z axis, and so we're probably at this point. So that's the point in question, and we have to describe we have to take these vector fields, because um, the question says I'll alert you to up here. We have to find these partial vector fields. Take those derivatives and let's plot them. So I'm going to minimize this. 
resize. Okay, let me put that up here. So let's actually go ahead and compute. So let's compute um, partial u. If you remember, this is partial r with respect to u, and this is the three partial derivatives. So let's slap a uh, like a boom, boom, boom with partial u's. We're going to get negative v sine u, v cosine of u, and 0. <clears throat> and then the same thing for v. We're going to hit it with three partials, and we're going to get um, cosine u, sine of u, and 3. <coughs> and then we've got to actually evaluate them at that special point. I'll circle it in red. Remember the circle, remember this is the parameter values up there. So I've got to plug that in for whenever I see a V and a U in these two things. So I'm going to say at three pi halves comma one half, this top vector well, okay, sine becomes negative one and v is just a half. So I'll get I'll get positive one half because I got a negative negative. Um, I'll get a zero and a zero. And then the second thing, well, my cosine at three pi halves is zero again. My sine is negative one. So zero, negative one, three. So I'm going to do this, okay, just, just for consistency, I'm going to do this one in my blue. So in the, previous, in the previous picture, I had suggested that these light blue things were tangent to the, to the dark blue lines. So let's see if it actually is true. Okay, so can we see that the, if I plotted the vector positive a half, zero, zero, at that black point right here, that I would be moving along that horizontal circle. Uh, Nicola's lost. Where are you getting the one half zero zero from? Um, plug in your um, for Nicola. We are plugging in stuff in there. So the we're getting ones and zeros because sine and cosine are quite well behaved at three pi halves. So I'm really just plugging in. This point in for uv into this vector is where I'm getting this vector from. I'm evaluating it. Yes, yes, yeah. I'm sh I'm sure you weren't the only one with that question. Okay, and so uh, go back going back to what I was saying. So that blue vector, you can imagine if I I'll draw it. It really is just moving a half step to the right. And yes, it is. It is tangent to that sort of blue circle that I've drawn. So. Um, I'm going to actually zoom in and actually, because I really like the zooming in feature. So it's really, that is my partial U at that point. Um, this is my, this is my base point and we're going tangent to this, this fiber around. Okay. Now let's, uh, let's again check this. I was doing that, the peach color up here. Okay, if you plot it, um, okay, I have this pink vector is going to have zero left and right step. It's going to come towards us along this negative z axis, negative y axis, and then it's again going to bump up by a factor of three. And you, and hopefully you can convince yourself. I'm going to zoom in that that vector uh, comes, you know, towards us and up. And so that really is tracing right along that purple line quite nicely. This is partial V. Ooh, that's too thick. That is partial V right there. And so you can like really, you can roll up your sleeves and just compute some things, plug in some points, and really convince yourself that you are, you know, tangent. So if I'm, I'm gonna just, so if I drew more of these pink vectors everywhere, they would always be along the purple line. Always, 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 always. This is, these are more values of partial V that I'm plotting without even needing to plug in. We've plugged in at one spot. 
but you probably you hopefully you can believe and and, and if you want to know why it's it's doing like going like this it's really just cover everything up and realize you're doing a parameterized curve and lily plot lily says did you mean to say that it was coming towards us partial v yes yeah yeah partial v is coming towards yeah i kind of meant coming as in this way is towards us yes and then the same thing with these nice light light blue curves coming out like this not like this they kind of go around this way okay all right so that's the picture that we have we have five minutes left so this is tricky what do i want I, mean, I can't do area i can't do area um let's think this is uh teaching on the fly okay so I got five minutes what can i do bill um i did a surface of revolution i don't want to do the, another one of those um maybe okay we've got four minutes now so the easiest thing I can do is let's let's also see how this situation manifests when we have just a plain parameterization. So let's do something simple. Okay, so let's do seven and then we'll be done for the day. Um, we'll take an extra day to do scalar surface intervals. That's fine. So how do partial U and partial V look on a parameterized surface uh parameterized um plane so like this is going to be not as exciting this picture over here was really pretty this picture is going to be a little less pretty i mean not whatever okay uh okay so in a plane i've got r of u v is some base point plus u times some vector a plus v times some vector b and the picture is um so there's my base point p and then I'm moving, so I kind of have that direction is my, this is my A, <coughs> and my purple is my direction B, and so uh, the plane kind of does this thing. Okay. U and V. Okay, um, sort of the horizontal lines are going that way and the vertical lines are like this. The parameterization is taking it over here and I'm like in X, Y, Z space, X, Y, Z. Okay, if we just computationally do a derivative, notice, you know, partial U is partial R, partial U. And if I just literally look at this equation, I take a like a formal derivative. Well, the the p is constant; it dies. Uh, I got a u touching the a, so I'll get a copy of a, and that v v p is totally dies. So really, this is that constant vector a, and similarly, partial v is the partial derivative of the parameterization with respect to v, and again, that's just the flat v. So if I want to like zoom in, this is I'm, what I'm going to do at each point in our on our surface, um, the partial u is just that a, a, a shifted copy of that a. So this might be partial u, and at this point, this is partial u. That's partial u, and um, the pink, the peach color, at each point just the partial v. And it is telling you if if you were standing at any one of these black points that I've drawn you increased either your u parameter or your v parameter, you'd either be walking parallel to that purple b line or that blue a line. And so it's, it's really telling you the same thing. Like, like these things are just constant. So I just wanted to show you, I knew I had five minutes. So I was like, um, you know, what, what's a really easy example where you can see the same thing. It's just like, if you can see the, the parallels between this picture and this picture, then you're, you're set and we'll be ready to do scalar integrals on Friday and um, I will turn off the camera the yes the um pause recording